Coming up on TechZilla, highlights from Comic-Con 2010, Dell's Android tablet, they call it the Streak. We're going to talk about audio encoding, video, well, cracking, and what's new over at the DMCA. And of course, we got a stack of your viewer questions, so fill that bowl with chicken tikka masala and dip in your naan, because TechZilla starts now. This episode of TechZilla is made possible by Gamefly. Check out Gamefly.com slash TechZilla for your free trial account. Squarespace. Netflix. Go to Netflix.com slash TechZilla to get a free trial membership. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Welcome to TechZilla. Hands-on reviews the latest tech and how to make the most out of the gear you've already got. Whether you're a beginner or a tech support for your friends and family, if you've got a question about tech or the best tacos in San Diego's gas lamp district, Ooh. we've got an answer for you. And if we don't, we'll track down someone who does. Tacos! The answer is pokies. 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 Pokies tacos. Oh, best place. Yes, it's awesome. Better than Taco Bell? Yes, better than Taco Bell. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Fresh from the awesome tweets I received recently, Pile at Dave McNally wrote, My four-year-old just requested I pause Texilla whilst he went to the bathroom so he didn't miss any of it. He's so proud. Dude, you've just Aww. given me hope that my son will someday accept that Wonder Pets doesn't go away forever just because we hit the pause button. Also, I'm, I, I think I speak for both of us when I say we're terribly honored to now be considered children's programming. Yes, I'm going to watch my mouth much more carefully now. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, what does... Yes. Yes. News? Yes, so uh, every three years the DMCA gets reviewed, and in some nifty news on the fair use front, while it's still illegal in the U.S. to back up your DVDs and Blu-rays or move their content to your other devices, <laughs> the Librarian of Congress decided that it's legal to jailbreak your iPhone and renewed a 2006 rule that exempted cell phone unlocking from DMCA prosecution. The review added exemptions for security researchers and one so that documentarians and other artists can get their fair use on with the content of DVDs without being liable for breaking the copy protection on them. Yeah, if you Very are cool. into creating like YouTube mashups with video, I suggest you read the guidelines from the Library of Congress because it's basically there's like there's the analog loophole and then there's what you're allowed to do violating the DCSS. Oh, we had so much fun with the analog loophole on BOL <laughs> back in the day. That was our favorite topic. The analog loophole, squeal like a pig. Oh, there's a four-year-old out there. Hi. It's still not legal to create or traffic and tools to crack the copy protection on DVDs or Blu-rays, mind you, and that I am still not legally allowed to back up my collection or. Or, or move my collection of videos to a server for easier access and, and to keep them out of the hands of my two-year-old. Well, that's an old rant. Props, by the way, uh, I gotta say to Joe in London, John in the UK, and at Dragging Lake, uh, location unknown, and everybody else that wrote in to gently inform me that the Outer Box Defender does not have a camera hole. It's the hole for the ambient light sensor that adjusts the screen's brightness. It's another, it's another it. Eight. I should have known. <laughs> Stop. We're not Analog even... holes, ambient light holes. They're it's... all one and the same. Anyway, moving on. It's all about the potty humor. Yes. Here. Will Google have a music store ready to battle with iTunes in time for the holidays? Sources told the New York Post that Google reps are in negotiations with the Harry Fox Agency, one of the biggest rights agencies in publishing. Great for Android, and uh, imagine searching for a song on Google and getting the chance to buy it. You can stream them right now, but it would be cool to just hit that little buy mm -hmm. button and have it added to your collection. I think that's what business school types call synergy. Or levering your synergies. Levering your synergies. Mm. Speaking of Android, and maybe Synergy won't be available on T-Mobile, we're told. But it's a 3G GSM bundle of Gorilla Glass and multitouch shininess from Dell. We last saw it at CES, and it is no longer known as the Mini 5. Yes. <laughs> it's the ever so amusingly named Streak. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't know the U.S. pricing or release date beyond the late July rumor at PCMag.com. It will have around July 27th, perhaps, uh, the day after we tape this. But we couldn't resist a chance to get hands-on with the 5-inch Android Power tablet. Six inches wide by 3.1 inches high by four tenths of an inch thick, the Streak packs a one gigahertz Snapdragon processor, look out Evo 4G, a five megapixel camera, assisted GPS, and yes, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and built-in text-to-voice, turn-by-turn directions, and live traffic, like any good Android phone. And yes, it does work as a full 3G phone. In fact, I'll say it, it is a 3G smartphone, a very big smartphone, as in bigger than the Droid X that we showed you last week. Which is pretty, pretty, I mean, it's like, I, I don't have small hands. 
No. And this is a big <laughs> handful. I gotta say the 800 by 480 screen looks pretty nice. It's got a VGA front camera. For the video on here, easy upload to YouTube, Flickr, and Facebook from the 5 megapixel camera. It actually feels really light, and it's got the whole haptic feedback thing going on like with that. the buttons on the side, which, which given that there's no texture to the buttons, makes them, if you, here, rub your finger over there, and you'll feel it vibrate as you rub across oh, yeah. the three of them. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting. There's no dedicated search key like most Android phones that some people might find annoying, and it's got a similar CPU and battery capacity as Sprint's Evo 4G, so battery life, big question mark at this point, but I bet it's going to be very similar to the 4G, maybe even a little less because of the size of that screen. There's a micro SD card hidden under the back, and it... It's actually fairly easy to take apart, but that means, micro SD means you can add expansion on there, which right now I'm pretty sure is a max of 32 gigabytes. The one that uh, comes with it, I think is two gigabytes, or it's two gigabytes on board, and that's a 16 gigabyte uh, uh, card we actually have in there right now. Snappy, performance is actually pretty good. Uh, as always, Wi-Fi works better than 3G for big downloads. Big shock there. This will be good for my purse, but maybe not so good for your pockets. Yeah, well, I don't know. You, you, it, it'll fit here. All right. I have really big pockets. You want to try this out <laughs> in your pocket? Oh, I don't know. I don't think <laughs> that's going to work out. The jeans are a little tight. It's kind of big on the side yeah. of your head. It, it begs so you to much. make calls via the bundled headset or via Bluetooth. Does I don't know even... if you can see this, but I've got like the side pockets, so it's like, hello. Would you carry it around? Um, probably not like this, but I would perhaps <laughs> uh, put it in my purse. I mean, it's not so bad. I mean, compared to the other Android phones we've seen out there, it's, it's, it's on the bigger side. Right. But if you want a really big space for web browsing and for running all those apps, it's not, not so bad. It's pretty and, cute. You know, put a little stand on it, get your Bluetooth keyboard going. I mean, just think of the old, like, personal media players of back in the day, you know? It's like, true. this is about this is that PSP size, size. But, but thinner. It is also PSP size. Maybe sized. a little higher this way, but it's got a bigger screen. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's got potential. We'll know more. Possibly shipping this week, we'll know by the time probably this... By the time you're watching this, you will know. <laughs> Crazy how that happens. Still to come, highlights from Comic-Con 2010. What did Veronica and Roger see? Oh, you're going to find out, people. Right now, though, Gamefly. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's the largest online video game rental service. Gives you a choice from over 7,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. Plans start at just $15.95 a month. That's cheap compared to buying a game that you hate. Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time, keep them for as long as they like. So don't worry about how long it takes you to get through Legend of Weasels Parts 1, 2, and 4. No late fees, no due dates, and shipping, always free. Once you're done playing a game, send it back, and Gamefly is going to send you the next available game in your list. If you really like the game, click Keep It, and Gamefly will actually send you the case and manuals free of charge, and they're cutting you a deal, a fat discount on the cost of that game. Now, if you're a Techzilla fan, you can get a 15-day free trial, but only, only if you go to Gamefly.com slash Techzilla. Please support Techzilla by supporting our sponsors like Gamefly. Welcome to this week's freebie download pick, a free program that we find useful, fun, or incredibly interesting. This week, Lightbox Free. You can snap a dozen digital pictures in seconds, but correcting them can take forever, especially if you're intimidated by traditional photo editing tools. But even if you're all about the Photoshop, the GIMP, or Paint.net, you should check out Lightbox Free. The quick edit mode in this image editor is amazingly simple, thanks to easy-to-use sliders and real-time corrections. Tweaking colors, removing red eye, souping up saturation, and eliminating odd things in the frame, sometimes you need to do some photo editing. If you want a fun, fast, and free tool to touch up your vacation photos, even if you shot them in RAW on your DSLR, check out Lightbox Free. So as you may well know from my tweets, I was down in San Diego this past Thursday, Friday, and Saturday for the San Diego Comic-Con along with Roger. And it being one of the annual pillars of geek pilgrimage in the calendar year, we figured we'd share some of our highlights while we were down there. But before we get into that, here's a question in the spirit of travel. Len in the Netherlands wrote us an email asking, I have a pretty weird question for you. I'm on a road trip right now in Eastern Europe. In a couple of days, we will leave Moscow and go to the Ukraine, hoping to visit Pripyat. This city is near the disastrous Chernobyl nuclear reactor. This is all very exciting, but I wanted to know if I should be worried taking my camera there. I have a Canon 550D Rebel Ti2, it's called in the US, I believe, and a 35mm old plastic camera to make some weird photos. Do you maybe know what effect the relatively high radiation will have on these cameras? Should I leave them in the car? Len. 
Well, that's a new one. Yes, it's a, in fact, this is probably the first time I've ever been asked that question. Yeah, I mean, I've thought about radiation in terms of the airport security line where you have to put it under the x-ray, but actual radiation out there in the world has never been something I've considered. So what do you think? So with this film camera, probably something you might want to consider because it is film and film emulsion and radiation don't mix, which is why when you go through the airport, the x-ray machine has a big sign that says, do put no film in here. Yeah. Hand it to the security guard, they'll take it around so it won't be damaged. Um, digital stuff, though, that should be fine, I would digital imagine. Digital stuff, for the most part, should be okay. In fact, I think the digital equipment will last a lot longer than you in that <laughs> environment. Um, there's always a minute risk that something may happen to the flash memory in your camera, corrupting the data, or worst case, corrupting the card. Uh, but if there's enough radiation to, f to cause actual harm and damage to your digital camera, there's probably enough radiation there to <laughs> cause you harm to your biological, physical self. Yeah, that would definitely cause for some weird photos, as you say. And hey, if you do get some good snaps, though, you should send them yeah. in to us. We want to see what it looks like. Yeah, and there. if you do manage to use your film camera, it doesn't come out too wonky, send it to us. That would be awesome. Oftentimes, I've seen you know radiation, like x-ray damage to uh, film, and it's not the whole picture, but usually it's like a half, and there's like this weird blurry Ooh, that edge. sounds kind of cool, actually. It can be, but I don't think I'd be risking my, my, yeah. my health. To, be careful out yeah. there. It's dangerous. Well, back to Comic-Con. Um, it has come and gone, and while Roger and I are still recovering, we wanted to fill you in on what you may have missed. So what were some of your highlights from Comic-Con this year? So there were a bunch of panels I did not stand in line for because the lines were long, and frankly, I, haven't, you know, I didn't want to spend two hours waiting to maybe get into the back row of Hall H. But uh, there was the Green Hornet which is uh, the new Seth Rogen uh, uh, movie inspired by the, the, the serial uh, from the 30s. Green Lantern with Ryan Reynolds. Everyone was really going gaga over that. He even did the whole kind of Green Lantern speech, the, the, the little uh, uh, thing that he says right before he charges up his ring in response to a viewer, uh, uh, audience question. There was um, Let Me In, which is uh, Chloe Moretz's vampire movie based on the Swedish movie, Let the Right One In. I heard that was actually a lot better looking than a lot of people were anticipating, that it yes. looks cooler, people were worried they were going to ruin it in the remake. So, you know, there, there's there's a lot of hope that a lot of these movies, what they showed is indicative of what the rest of the movie will look like. So all those were positive. Of course, there was, unfortunately, a stabbing in Hall H. Yeah. Which I is heard, really weird because it was, took place during the Resident Evil panel. This is what I heard. It happened right after I left, actually. But I guess two fans were arguing over a seat. Yes. And it got violent, and one of them stood up and stabbed the guy right in the face with a pen. With Initially, a pen. people were saying it was right in the eye, but I guess they downgraded it to just near his yeah. eye on his face. The, it, the, the cut was somewhere around here on the on, on the face, and uh, one of the TRS guys was actually in the I think two rows in front <laughs> of what happened. Uh, where it happened, so he, they were giving me the lowdown yeah, on well, the whole thing. Yeah, well, you know thing. what they say, the pen is mightier than the sword. It's true. <laughs> Which is funny, because I thought, like, in the nerd, people would be whipping out the fake lightsabers and stuff. I mean, Comic-Con is really the worst place for nerd rage, because yes. people have legit weapons, like, on them Well, sometimes. you can't anymore, because they're really tight about, you, you can't have, like, an edge weapon, or, or you can't have a fake gun without an orange I was tip. holding a broadsword that could definitely do some damage. Should have went to security. They yeah. were really tight about, now, the other the other thing that was really cool was uh, uh, Walking with the Dead, I believe. It's the uh, AMC new series based on the comic book. Yeah, it's something like that. It's uh, w essentially the, the, the concept is that, you know. It's just called The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, the Walking Dead, and essentially the, the whole world has been zombified, and you have this small group of people who are not, you know, not infected, and it, kind of that group dynamic as they basically try to find uh, uh, a way out of this hellish nightmare. <laughs> uh, also coming up was. Uh, uh, Captain America, Thor, and they teased the Avengers movie. I'm going nuts because I can't find the Thor trailer anywhere online. They haven't. It will be yet. up soon, I'm sure, probably in the next week or so. Uh, I love Kenneth Branagh, and I'm really excited to see how he does as Thor. He's like a Shakespearean actor. I mean, the guy is amazing. Hey, so was uh, Jean Luc or Jean Luc Picard, uh, <laughs> Patrick, Stewart. Patrick Stewart, <laughs> and he did uh, he did excellent. Oh, oh, speaking What's of zombies, I picked up ten dollars worth of zombie flesh. It's, it's is this set. actually edible? Yes, it's beef jerky. It's, it's beef jerky. It's beef jerky. And the eyes are gumballs. Oh, God, it's so nasty looking. But it is zombie flesh. How come you haven't to... eaten it yet? Are you because it's it zombie flesh. I, I'm not going to eat zombie flesh. It's going to be one of those things you keep on your office wall for eternity. I guess. 
All right, what did you see? Well, I unfortunately didn't get too much time on the show floor because I was doing panels. I was actually on the Geek Girls Exist panel with Morgan Romain. She's the founder of Ubisoft's all-girl gaming team, the Frag Dolls. Uh, Bonnie Burton, who is just totally delightful, she wrote You Can Draw Star Wars, and she also did Girls Against Girls. Marion Call, who actually performed at Woodstock that evening, she plays songs inspired by Firefly, Serenity, and Battlestar Galactica. She actually did a musical performance for her own introduction, which was amazing. Speaking of Firefly, I, this is a total aside. <laughs> I was almost run over by Nathan Fillion as I was walking down oh, Sixth Street. Foot head to, foot he, okay, his chin starts at the top you. of my head. The guy is twice my width, and he's like he's like a moving like tank. And yeah. like he was work, he was looking down at his phone, and he's walking toward me, and I had to dodge, and then slightly turn up my head, and I noticed it's Nathan Fillion. So well, I didn't also yell at on him. my panel was uh, Carrie Byron from the MythBusters, who was just totally adorable and very sweet in person. Supposedly, uh, not uh, who's the which is the the MythBusters with uh, without the without the uh, beret. Uh, 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 Adam, Adam Savage. Adam. Yeah. Supposedly, he was walking around the Comic Con floor in costume. Yes, he does that at every convention. Actually, um, at and Dragon Con, I... he was going around dressed as a, as Chewbacca, and this year he was a stormtrooper. Yes, and they I were doing think... a contest that if you got a picture of him, I think I got his photo. You like, think in, so? in the, store. the The only reason why I say that is because Graham, our editor, said that's him. That's him. In the suit, and it's like, okay, click, click, click. Oh, nice. So, yeah, you should oh. enter it into the con. I think someone won already. Dang. But next time, next year. And I also moderated the panel for the Rift Tracks guys oh, nice. again this year. And they picked um, as their next fan favorite selection, they're going to be doing the last airbender for an upcoming Riff. Oh, nice. Yeah, I it was can't wait for that. Really cool. And of course, Woodstock, which I was really bummed that you missed. I know you had other stuff going on, but that's the concert series thrown by Paul and Storm and hosted by Adam Savage and Will Wheaton. And they had tons of different performances and uh, musical numbers and magicians and comedy. And I actually introduced Marion on stage. So that oh, was nice. Nice. And I cool. didn't mess up. I was so I was That's so awesome. happy. And oh. Aaron Aaron Douglas from BSG was there too. Oh, cool! Yeah. I I went to the Dignation uh, event over the House of Blue, which is awesome. I, I suggest you check it out if you haven't seen it already. Uh, one of my friends actually won the costume contest, and she won an iPod. So bias. I wasn't the one voting. <laughs> it was the audience. Hello. And if you guys have any pictures or stuff you want to show us from Comic-Con, send them in to Texilla at revision3.com. Coming up next, we've got more questions and Texilla goodness for you. But first, a word from one of our sponsors. Are you looking to publish to your website or blog but don't want to deal with the nitty gritty? Then Squarespace is for you. Squarespace is a publishing system for anyone looking to build a blog, portfolio, or any kind of website. With blog tools that allow for iPhone updating on the go, hassle-free importing of sites from other environments, robust stats, and much more, Squarespace makes it super easy for anyone to build and maintain a site that you could only dream of with other platforms. And if you have coding experience, Squarespace allows you to delve into the code and customize things even further. Tens of thousands of people all across the internet have been using Squarespace for years, and their already great service is only getting better by the day. On July 14th, Squarespace announced a huge round of capital investment that will allow them to expand at an even faster rate. We want to congratulate Squarespace and are truly excited to work with such great people. Head over to squarespace.com to get a 14-day free trial and be sure to use the promotion code TEXELLA when placing your order to get 10% off the lifetime of your account. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick? Boxo. Are you an online shopping addict like I am? If you are, you probably have a lot of different packages floating around the country, making their slow and steady progress to your front door. If you want a quick and easy way to track their progress, try Boxo. This site has a very clean and minimal interface, and all you need to do is plug in the tracking number into the empty field on the front page. Once you do, you're presented with a Google map showing where in the world your package is currently and the path it took to get there. You can see how many miles it's traveled and even set up RSS feeds for your various packages so you can get up-to-date info on the progress. Whether you're using UPS, FedEx, DHL, or the United States Postal Service, Boxo can track and map your stuff. Try it today at boxo.com. Speed round of questions? Why not? First up, Sean underscore Mitch on Twitter said, what do you think of the case design of the iBuyPower Thermaltake Level 10? 
Well, it's a badass PC in an $800 Thermaltake case. If you've never seen it, check out the link we put up to PC Perspectives Mini in the show notes. Uh, the link for the iBuy Power build packed in the uh, level 10 you sent priced at about $2,500 or so. And that's roughly. For, yeah, it's right. So it's this big, massive hunk of aluminum and all of the components hang out of the side. And there's like, say, it, it looks like it's, it's kind of like space age tower meets giant block of aluminum. The thing, 2500 bucks is for specs awfully close to my home-brewed $1,200 system, or at least it was 1200 bucks before I bought the Intel SSD, so call my system 14500 I recycled my case, so I saved some money there. Yeah, it's a pretty wild case. I mean, it's 50 pounds, 26.3 by 24.5 by 12.6 inches of overbuilt aluminum. There's no cheesy case flex here. No, I this mean, is it's, not a cheap, scronky yeah, aluminum case. It's this basically is a, a giant mounting monolith of all your components that hang off of it uh, with space for six drives. Reviews say decent cooling for the drives, not the best airflow across the motherboard. Uh, airflow can be improved, so if you want to modify your $850 case, there's there's some, some spots for it. I mean, it's supposedly fit and finish or flawless. I think it's cool looking, but I also recycled an HP Blackbird case that weighs like 75 pounds and a pair of Dell Towers that look like a Cylon bread with the Death Star and created these things and painted them red. Yeah. It's, you know. Yeah, if you've got the cash, go for it. Or get a cheap case and build two gaming systems for that money. <laughs> yes. Or four of your or gaming four. system. Yeah, of my gaming system. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at the Wench 61 writes at Patrick Norton, I read in an earlier post that you were playing with Puppy Linux. I use Linux and have no clue what that is, please. So Puppy Linux is a live distro. The that cutest can... sounding Linux distro ever. It is. It's adorable, Puppy right? Linux. It, it can live in as little as 128 megabytes of, mm -hmm. of memory on your system, and it loads completely into system memory, completely, as in no hitting a CD-ROM once it boots. It boots stupid quick. It runs stupid fast. And before I get any further, you need to check out Lifehacker's pack for Linux. They do well, they did one for Windows. They did one for, for OS X, and now they've done one for Linux. It's like a collection of the best Linux downloads. Yeah, you can just put that on a USB disk and install it anywhere. Yeah, it'll boot off a CD-ROM, it'll boot off a thumb drive. It's great for recovering dead systems, like mm -hmm. Windows systems that have died. I, I, I actually, you know, I mean, I love Ubuntu. The Ubuntu Live CD is very similar to Puppy Linux. You know, it doesn't have to, you don't have to load it on your hard drive. Um, but uh, I loaded it onto a Core 2 Duo. I burned it onto a disk, loaded it into the Core 2 Duo that it crashed. It had a massive Windows 7 crash from hell and used it to recover my data. And then now it's been running like, I never shut it down after I backed the data off of it onto a USB drive. It's been running for like five months now. Nice. I use it for browsing, I use it for editing. Yeah, Puppy Linux. You can download it for free, of course, at puppylinux.org. Mm -hmm. Tommy in Buxton, Maine, right, saying, I've ripped all my music in flack. I have an iPod Classic, 120 gigabytes, and as we all know, Apple hates anything they didn't make, so no flack for the iPod. I was hoping you might know of a really good audio transcoder, preferably free, that can do almost anything. I used Handbrake after its review on Texilla. I loved it and still use it, and I'd love a companion for it, so all my media is iPod friendly. Thanks, Tommy. Okay, I gotta say DB Power Amp, but mm -hmm. like anything involving audio transcoding, I have to go DB Power Amp. Yeah, we've recommended it a million times, and people seem pretty happy with that recommendation. So I would say give it a shot. Give it a try. Yeah. It, it seems like it would be a good companion piece to Handbrake that, for I, all your media needs. Yeah, between Handbrake and DB Power Amp. There's all that, yeah, you know, trust me. Just download. Go to dbpoweramp.com. Check it out. I'm pretty sure all of the codecs are free for that, for that one. Yeah, we'll have to double check. Ooh. But I think yeah, it's probably okay. I oh, think with Flack, you'll be all right. The, and the paid version of TV Power Amp, pretty cool. We, I should do a demo Ooh. later on. Hey, Patrick and Veronica, I have a friend, a friend that recently got a new iPad and wants to ask the following. Friend. Friend wants to say that someone is going on a trip and as it's nearly five hours on the plane, they want to take along some movies they already own to watch on the flight on the shiny new iPad. There wouldn't be any border crossing, so having the iPad searched for supposedly pirated items wouldn't be a concern to this person. Now, before Patrick goes off on a brief warning about how the DMCA states copying of DVDs, even ones you already own in the U.S. is against the law, already did that in this show, they understand that they understand that doing so would be breaking said law, and I'm asking for a solution in a purely hypothetical manner, for breaking the law would be bad. Thanks for any answers, purely hypothetically speaking, of course, Jay. Well, hypothetically speaking, Jay, um, 
Why we're doing that, I don't know, since we talk about this all the time. We'd say, Handbrake is your first download. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned, it does a spiffy job of encoding video and transcoding things. Um, it doesn't do copy protection, though, yeah. so you'll need something like any DVD HD, which basically shows the contents of your disk to Windows apps free of copy protection. Yeah, it's basically that's all it does. It's a layer, and it makes things visible. I got to say this, by the way. You already said it. Don't back up this you don't own. And if any DVD is too expensive, check out the free version of DVD Fast. HD Decryptor. A lot of people love that. It's, you, they have a free version you can check out and uh, enjoy your flight. No, enjoy his friend's flight. Tell his friend should enjoy his Jay, flight. Jay, tell your friend we hope they enjoy their well entertained flight. Oh my goodness. Coming up next, viewer questions. But first, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, Netflix. Netflix delivers movies directly to your home, saving you time, money, and hassle. And as a Netflix Unlimited member, you get DVDs by mail in about one business day. Plus, you can instantly stream thousands of TV episodes and movies right to your PC, Mac, or Netflix-ready device like the Xbox 360, PS3, and Nintendo Wii console. Watch as many movies as you want. Shipping is free, and there are never any late fees and no due dates. Keep the movies as long as you like. DVDs by mail, plus instantly stream to your TV. Get unlimited movies two ways for only $8.99 a month. As a new member and a Texilla viewer, you can get a free trial membership. Go to www.netflix.com slash Texilla and sign up now. Be sure to use this URL so they know we sent you. We got ourselves a video question from Morgan. Take it away. Hey Texilla, my buddies and I are working on a new web show and we're using an AVC HD camcorder to capture our footage. Now my Core 2 Duo can edit video in HD, but it's not really a pretty sight. I was thinking about batch converting my files, but I'm not really sure what the best format is before I bring it into Premiere. What would you guys suggest? AVCHG is one of the more popular codecs. It's popular in consumer and pro-level video cameras that use flash or hard drive storage instead of tape. It offers better picture quality at the same bit rates as HDV or the same quality at a lower bit rate, which means smaller files. But it also means you need some horsepower to edit raw AVCHD footage. Uh, you're on the right track on batch conversion. Um, ideally, you'd want to use a less compressy codec so you're not maxing out your CPU every time you scrub a clip. A popular app for that is Voltaic HD from Shredworks for both PC and Mac. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Basically, you use Voltaic HD to convert the files to a Premiere Pro native AVI file, and you should be set with basically not watching your machine grind and groan and fire up the fans and melt. Well, you can boil tea while you're trying to edit an AVC. This is what HD it looks like to system. grind all those <laughs> grinding high the, bit rate files. The, the, grinding the high bit rate files to make yes. my bread. Yes. Hopefully, you're not making a competing <laughs> podcast, Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'd feel bad telling you all that helpful information. Adam out in Old Blighty wrote in asking us, I recently bought a 15-inch i7 MacBook Pro for use with my DJ setup. What? Upon using the Mac, I realized I would need a much better quality sound card. Mm. Can you please suggest any USB sound cards that have stereo jack inputs allowing me to plug in my CD turntables, have a good recording quality, and are compatible with Mac? Adam in England. Oh, boy. Yes. Well, yeah. luckily, we have a resident uh, DJ expert here at the house. That would be Mao. Mao. Mao, the famous droid expert view. His reply was gear needed depends, basically what you need depends specifically on what kind of setup you really want to create. Are you DJing? Are you recording? If you're DJing, what software are you using? All of this is going to impact your decision. Are you DJing only or are you using it as a recording studio as well? Because, you know, basically the recording studio more high end, the DJ stuff a little more low end. Please don't hate me if you're into the rave scene. Um, Mao also recommended the Newmark DJ IO channel USB audio interface, that's a mouthful. He says it's a really good starting point if you're looking to DJ. It's cheap, it's under 90 bucks US, small and rugged so it's not gonna fall apart when you're dragging it from one gig to another. Multiple outputs, plus a headphone out because it's really irritating to use one of your outputs to do your monitoring. He says it's not something you wanna use if you need to record though. Mao says he personally uses the Newmark NS7 DJ turntable controller. It's a nice piece of hardware. Basically, it's got a fake seven inch disc on the top that allows you to do DJ spinning type effects. And it's got the Serato It's software that basically bundled with it that allows the hardware to control the software, which makes it really useful. And you can use it to record uh, if you are willing to accept quarter inch mic inputs instead of full on balance line inputs. Now, if you really need to do multi-track recording, you really need to think along entirely different lines, like a USB or Firewire audio interface. M-Audio, good place to check out, reasonable prices, quality gear, at least until it falls apart. 
if you drop it downstairs. So M Audio, not good for dropping downstairs, but excellent for recording audio. <laughs> not good for dropping downstairs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Finally, we get this email from Steve about a problem we were trying to solve last week with Deborah and her malware-laden Firefox that was redirecting all her Google results when she clicked on them. He writes, I've had a few people have this issue lately. These hijacks are nasty and not easy to get rid of. In all the cases I've come across, it has been a Win32 variant responsible. The malicious removal tool from Microsoft was supposed to work and did find it, but could not get rid of it. <laughs> Super anti-spyware, malware bytes, AVG, A squared, SpyBot SD, D, all Ouch. could not get rid of it completely. Not that I'm a huge fan of Microsoft, but I downloaded Microsoft Security Essentials and it fixed it in all three times I've seen this lately. Sadly, I now have MSE instead of my AVG that I've loved for so long. Oh well, it uses less resources anyway than on my aging computer. Steve from New England. Well, thanks for sharing. Uh, malware keeps getting more and more pernicious and frankly, we all need to be on our toes whenever we're online. So again, keep your antivirus and anti-spyware <laughs> up to date and active. They don't work if you're not running the latest definitions and are, of course, turned on. I hate to sound like a naggy Nelly. Yeah, but just turn on the optical update for antivirus and anti-spyware and anti every bad thing you load in your computer. Yep. Yeah, and just run Do it, it now. Hey, for everybody watching, we live in your questions, so please, please email us, techzilla at revision3.com. Tech out product reviews, how to's. You ask us, we'll do it, but we need your emails to make the show go. So don't be shy, send them into techzilla at revision3.com. Even better, send us in a video question. Think of all the fun you can have and the admiration of all your friends and family when they see your mug on our show. Just keep it to 15 seconds, upload it to YouTube, and send us a link in an email with video question in the subject line. And as always, you can visit our forums at revision3.com slash forum. Share your thoughts, ideas, or comments with other fans of the show. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Until next time, you've been watching Techzilla. edit mode in this image editor is amazingly easy to use, thanks to easy to use, really? Okay. Sorry. Three, two. Patrick. The quick edit mode in this image editor is totally simple to use, thanks to, to crap. I should have gone through this one. I'm just going to, I'm just going to grammar check and spell check That's the good. entire rundown from now on. Odd things in the frame, sometime, 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 God, Roger. No, Patrick wrote this. God, Patrick. Lennon and the, and, 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 Lennon and Lennerland. Okay. And hoping to visit Pripyat. 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 Hoping to visit Pripyat. See, you do it that way, you can pronounce it. <laughs> Don't touch me. Don't touch me. For God's sakes, you Five, barely have any armor. Four. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Welcome to <laughs> Sorry.